Once labeled the sick man of Europe, Ireland has defied expectations, emerging as a shining example of prosperity on the global stage. With an astounding GDP per capita of $145,000 according to the IMF and $106,000 according to the World Bank, Ireland is currently the country with the highest GDP per capita in the world, surpassing even the most formidable economies like the United States and Germany. However, how did this little island nation, tainted by a past of economic hardship and demographic loss, become a global economic force? In this video, we'll learn the reasons behind Ireland's remarkable rise to prosperity and wealth over all obstacles. Ireland's extraordinary economic performance is not just limited to its high GDP per capita but also extends to its remarkable GDP growth rate, which makes it the fastest growing economy in the European Union. With a staggering 12.2% GDP growth in the previous year, Ireland's rapid expansion has been a driving force behind the Eurozone's ability to avoid a recession during challenging economic times. In contrast to other wealthy countries within the EU and beyond, Ireland's development rate is truly remarkable. With many developed countries finding it difficult to attain even moderate growth rates. For example, historically, the GDP growth rates of EU powerhouses like Germany and France have remained relatively stable, averaging about 2% every year. Even the world's most powerful economy, the United States, usually sees GDP growth rates between 2 and 3%. Furthermore, Ireland's robust trading connections with other EU members and international markets have furnished a sturdy basis for sustained economic growth. The nation's advantageous position and advanced infrastructure have made trade and investment movements more effective. Furthermore, Ireland's ability to navigate the challenges posed by the global financial crisis and other economic downturns has demonstrated its economic resilience and adaptability. However, Ireland's economic history before the 1990s was marked by a number of difficulties that prevented its growth. A major concern at that time was the ongoing population decrease, which was caused by past occurrences such as the Great Famine of the 1840s. The terrible consequences of the famine resulted in a great loss of life and a wave of widespread migration from Ireland, which caused the population to drastically drop. The population never recovered to its pre-famine levels, which had long-term negative effects on the nation's economy. The aftermath of the famine and the ensuing British rule contributed to Ireland's economic stagnation. During that period, agriculture had a major role in the economy of the nation, with a particular emphasis on growing and exporting goods like potatoes. However, Ireland's lack of economic diversification made it vulnerable to swings in agricultural productivity, which resulted in times of economic distress. On top of that, political unrest and turmoil worsened Ireland's economic problems. The two main political parties, Fianna Fáil and Fine Gael, rotated in power, causing frequent changes in the country's government. A lack of clear long-term strategy for economic development resulted from this political instability, which frequently hampered the formulation of successful economies. But in the 1990s, Ireland's economic situation took a dramatic turn for the better, entering into the Celtic Tiger era. During this time, the nation's overall prosperity significantly improved as the economy grew quickly. Several factors contributed to Ireland's economic resurgence during this time. One key catalyst for Ireland's economic transformation was its decision to adopt more open and liberal economic policies. Pro-business policies were adopted by the administration, which also lowered tariffs and promoted foreign direct investment, especially from multinational corporations. As a result, there was an inflow of foreign investment and many multinational businesses established their European headquarters in Ireland. Added to that, Ireland's economic expansion was significantly influenced by its 1973 admission to the European Union. Access to a larger market, trade and investment facilitation, and eligibility for development funding and financial aid were all made possible by Ireland's membership in the EU. Ireland is successful when compared to other developed nations for a number of reasons. 
First off, Ireland is a favorite tax haven for many Western multinational corporations due to its advantageous placement within the EU and its low corporate tax rates. On top of that, Ireland's emphasis on education and training has resulted in a highly skilled and adaptable workforce. The availability of skilled labor has attracted foreign companies looking for talent, further contributing to economic growth. Even while everything looks fantastic on the surface, there are doubts about Ireland's GDP figures because of the practice of certain multinational companies attributing a sizable amount of their worldwide sales to Ireland, mainly because of the favorable tax environment in the nation. In order to reduce their overall tax burden, Firms engage in a practice known as profit shifting or tax optimization when they transfer profits to low tax jurisdictions such as Ireland. Because these multinational corporations account for a large share of economic activity, even while a large portion of their real business operations take place in other countries, Ireland's reported GDP may be overstated as a result. Because of this, several experts and economists, including the former Irish central banker, have argued that some GDP components should be disregarded when determining the true wealth of the nation. In an effort to give a more realistic picture of Ireland's economy, some economists are advocating the removal of particular GDP components. When the earnings attributable to the existence of multinational corporations are disregarded, attention is directed towards domestic economic activity, such as government spending on public services and household consumption. With this method, it is possible to compare Ireland's economic performance with that of other nations on a more level playing field and with greater accuracy. This alternative viewpoint states that Ireland would still be regarded as a prosperous European nation if we only took into account household consumption and government spending, even though its GDP per capita is less than that of nations like Luxembourg, which is renowned for its high income levels and high standard of living. It is critical to recognize that GDP figures are not the only factor used to evaluate a nation's economic health. Understanding a country's total prosperity also requires awareness of factors like social welfare, economic distribution, and human development indicators. In spite of the possibility of GDP estimates being overstated, Ireland has undoubtedly made substantial economic development and advancement. Its competent workforce, pro-business policies, and strong institutions have encouraged economic growth and drawn significant foreign investment. The nation's dedication to innovation, research, and education has produced a thriving and competitive economy. Ireland's economic success story demonstrates how, even for a small country with a difficult past, intelligent policies, advantageous business conditions, and international collaborations may result in significant economic advantages. Although GDP is not a perfect indicator of well-being, Ireland's affluence and tenacity can serve as a model for other nations aiming to achieve sustained economic development. The nation's ability to maintain its standing as a rich European nation depends on its ability to continue navigating the challenges posed by a globalized economy and sticking to its commitment to prudent economic management. And that's all for today's video. This is Visionomics. Signing out.